Welcome to the second broadcast from GDS Church during this time of the coronavirus pandemic. When the virus first broke, everyone was treating it very lightly, many seeing it as an opportunity for a holiday, many seeing it as a time to get together with others and have a break, a barbecue. But now we realise the full seriousness of this situation with many, many suffering and many sadly having died. We come here to seek God's peace and God's assurance. Paul says, the Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God and the peace of God which passes all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. We're going to be hearing a message later from Trevor about knowing that God cares for us at all times and that we have no need to be anxious or troubled. I sense that that's exactly what many of us are at this point. At the beginning of the outbreak, people were quite blasé and we're seeing it as an opportunity for a holiday and a break. But now we realise that this is deadly serious. And so we do have a certain level of anxiety and concern and fear for our loved ones, for ourselves, for the future. And so we come here seeking God's peace and the words and the message that Trevor will bring about not being anxious about anything couldn't be more timely. Hi everyone. I wanted to uh, record my own thoughts as I'm walking through the woods. Uh, you can hear the birds singing and I thought it was a good place to share something on, from my heart to yours. You know, last week I uh, sat for a little bit on Sunday morning just outside the church building in Gorgie. Uh, just to make sure that no one who had perhaps not gotten the message uh, that the church service was cancelled had come. And so I'm glad that it wasn't, that uh, the message did get to everyone. But in any, in any case, I was sitting there. The sky was blue and I could feel the warmth of the sun on my face. People were passing by every couple of minutes, but as you can imagine, it was a lot quieter than it usually is on Gorgie Road, even on a Sunday. And so I began to hear the birds sing over the road at White Park, just as you might be able to hear now. They were going about their normal business, probably completely oblivious to the pandemic that we're all living through at the moment. And it struck me that I've actually never paid any attention I've never noticed the birds of White Park singing. I've had my kids along there very often, but I've never noticed. Even at last year's Easter egg rolling competition, um, didn't even notice them there. I suppose people who might have lived in Gorgie longer than I have might have already known about the birds that sing in White Park and enjoyed the sound that they make, but I would hazard a guess that you actually haven't, because if you're like me, uh, life is too busy. Everyone's busy doing their own thing, living their daily lives, and so we are too wrapped up in our own world. We can be, at least. So as I was sitting there, Outside the church, uh, a small blackbird flew over to me and he landed right in front of me. He walked around calmly, without fear. Possibly he was maybe thinking of asking me for some food. Uh, I had wondered, uh, it must be true that the birds and other animals uh, might be more aware of us than we are aware of them. And this experience has followed me 
uh, around this week actually, uh, because on a number of occasions, um, either myself or my family have encountered something of nature that we are normally blind to. Uh, my wife and kids found a pure white squirrel in a tree as they went on a walk during their daily ex exercise. And I don't know about you, but I've never ever seen a white squirrel before. And I wouldn't have believed it if they told me. Because uh, I can't be sure that I even knew that they existed, to be honest. And so how amazing it is that we can just go through our lives not realizing what's around us. On another day I was out with my children and I noticed a beautiful flower. It was uh, one among many, to be honest. And I don't know what made me just take notice of this one. And I took a picture of it and I'll put it here, here up here for reflection. And it's just clothed in such beauty. It's absolutely amazing. You might be wondering why I'm recording this reflection here instead of in a warm home. But it's actually here where I was walking through these woods the other day that uh, was with my family. And all of a sudden I heard a bird start singing. And I turned my head and saw this red-breasted robin looking directly at me as I passed him. He stayed there long enough for me to take a picture before he flew off. But again, I noticed how I could have passed him without notice, as he was so small among all those trees. You see, all of these different encounters with nature this week have reaffirmed to me something I believe God reminded me of from Matthew's Gospel when I sat there in front of the church. It's a passage that uh, Jesus is actually reminding us that our Heavenly Father cares for all of his creation. Have a listen to Zoltan's reading uh, from this passage. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 6, at verse 25. Do not worry. Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food, and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? And why do you worry about your clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? So do not worry, saying, What shall I eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Amen. And so it feels almost like an eternity since Peter began his series on prayer for the church to think through together. 
yet it was only a few weeks ago last week being the week that we couldn't meet together and uh, but it's important to remember how Peter spoke about the Lord's Prayer from Matthew 6 and it's funny that despite the disruption that we're all going through as we continue our focus on prayer that we are still within the same chapter I wonder how many of us have recently heard the words we're currently living through unprecedented times I've been getting emails and letters from all sorts of organizations and they always begin with in these unprecedented times of crisis it is certainly true that life has become far more difficult and disruptive than normal where actions are being taken to reduce the spread of the coronavirus I wonder if you have perhaps thought to yourself I wonder why God is allowing this maybe you even indeed know someone who might be hostile to faith in general or perhaps Christianity in particular who might easily look to this situation as proof that God cannot exist because if there is an all-loving, all-powerful God why would he allow such struggle, such suffering I'm not here to answer this question but I am here to offer some hope remember the birds of White Park who sang and they went about their own lives these birds neither sow nor reap nor do they have anywhere to store up things for themselves and the plants that bloom they bloom their flowers in abundance and yet they're, and they're, and they're clothed in such beauty as well when you think of the Lord's Prayer you immediately recognize that we are not sovereign over this world more, po more pointedly it's humanity it's humanity that seems to treat creation as something that can be used for our own ends and so we scurry around mostly only think of ourselves and the lives of our loved ones and we carry all our worries and our fears about what's happening and what will become of this situation my hope for us all is that in all of this we can remember that it is God who is sovereign not just over us but over all of creation and if he cares for the birds of the air and the flowers of the field how much more can he care for you? an important point to think about as well is that he cares for them when they are healthy and in bloom as well as when they are sick and when they wilt you know in Matthew 5 we're taught that God causes the sun to rise on the good as well as the evil and he sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous we're part of all of his creation and we all go through good times and bad times we all have suffering we all have hardship times of happiness and plenty, plenty. So what does this have to do with prayer? There is a man in Christian ministry who I admire and respect very much. He's recently been diagnosed with cancer as the doctors accidentally found a growth on his spine and he is suffering considerably unimaginable pain on a daily basis. He was asked, what do you think of the role prayer has in situations like this and the question was referring to the pandemic of this virus it wasn't referring to his pain or his cancer the 
not referring to the pain he has to live through. But his response was this. Prayer is often seen as like putting the right coin in and you get the right product out. As if it's some kind of slot machine answer to our problems. But it's not what prayer really is about, actually. Prayer to start with is communion with God. And he goes on, he says, prayer is not so much bringing God to our beck and call to align what we want as much as it, as it is the process with which our hearts get conditioned to receive his will and to become and to come into alignment with what he has for us. So you see, prayer is not a control of God as much as it is a surrender to his will. And that indeed brings peace along the way. Matthew 6.33 says, But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. I believe in these difficult and unprecedented times, that as you seek God and his will for you, he will give you his peace. And he will show you how you can have confidence that he cares for you and that he provides for you. It's almost like climbing up a hill. You get out of breath. You're not sure how much further it is to go. And perhaps many times you think, why? Why am I doing it this way? But I would want to just encourage you that if you are placing your, hand, your life in the will of God, you can have confidence. You can trust that he cares for you and he will look after you. Because you are held tightly and caringly in his loving grace. And nothing can separate us from that. This coronavirus might well be a time of suffering, a time of hardship, but we can trust God. And if we go, keep going, if we keep going and surrender to his will, we might find that he has so much more beauty to show us. Now there's a view. God bless you all. I pray for you and I wish you peace. And please know that you can contact the church with anything that you want prayer for or any practical help that you need. But certainly we hope that you can place your trust in God first and let him look after you. God bless. Hello, GDS friends and family. I'd like to share with you a story today about worry. It's a big issue at the moment. It's something that we can take to God, but it's something that we can sometimes let take hold of us. After the story would usually be the time that the children and young people would leave the rest of the church family gathered to go and explore the activities and story more in their age groups. They can still do that, there's provision through our website and Facebook for them to find some activities that you can do as a family or they can do by themselves. In the meantime, 
Here's the story. Bob the Bird One day, Bob the Bird went to visit his friends. First, he flew to the farm to see Kevin the Quail. Come and see the farmer, said Kevin. You won't believe it. He has sown his crop, but every day he worries. What if it doesn't rain? What if the plants don't grow? What if I don't have enough food for my family? Poor fellow, doesn't he have a father in heaven, like the one who cares for the birds? Bob said goodbye to Kevin and flew to town to see Penelope the pigeon. Come and see the butcher, said Penelope. You won't believe it. He says his sausages are all beef, but I've seen him fill them. They're half sawdust. Every day he worries. If I don't cut corners, I'll go broke. If I go broke, I'll lose my shop. If I lose my shop, I'll lose my reputation as a respectable businessman. Poor fellow. Doesn't he have a father in heaven, like the one who cares for the birds? It was getting late, so Bob said goodbye to Penelope and flew off to visit his old friend, Ozzy the Owl. Come and look at this, said Ozzy. You won't believe it. She does an honest day's work, then stays up every night worrying. What if prices go up? What if my wages go down? What if I fall asleep and someone steals my money? Doesn't she have a father in heaven like the one who cares for the birds? The next day, Bob saw a crowd of worried people. He felt sad because they didn't seem to have a father in heaven who cared for them. But in the middle of the crowd was one man who looked happy. Don't worry about your life, he said. Don't worry about having something to eat or wear. Life is more than food and clothes. Look at the birds in the sky. They don't plant or harvest. They don't even store grain in barns. Yet your father in heaven feeds them. Hooray! The people do have a father in heaven who cares for them. If only they would believe it. Let us join our hearts together in prayer. Let us pray. Lord, we come before you this day, during this time of crisis and stress through the coronavirus, and your word to us is do not worry. Yet we are so aware of the vulnerability and fragility of life. It is hard to hear those calming words above the clamour in our minds caused by fear, uncertainty, isolation, helplessness. Help us to centre ourselves upon you, for it is your presence with us that makes all the difference. I am with you. Never will I leave you or forsake you. Nothing can separate us. Father, you are greater than any crisis we are passing through. Your love for us is the constant pulse in every moment, for God so loved the world. Yet we confess that we are quick to doubt your love for us. We know the selfishness, unbelief and sin of which we are capable, how we let down one another, hurt those around us and grieve your spirit in so many of our words, thoughts and actions. We are truly sorry and wonder how it is possible for you to care for us through it all. But your Son, Jesus Christ, shows us your very heart towards sinners. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. As we lay all our sin before you, 
trusting in all that Jesus did for us in going to the cross for our salvation, let us hear those words of Jesus spoken from the cross to us personally. Father, forgive. Holy Spirit, flow into our heart, mind and soul and make us clean, renewed and at peace. Help us to see your constant love in the world around us. In the beauty and rhythms of nature, help us to see the provision of your love for us. In the kindness of strangers at this time and the support of those closest to us, help us to sense the touch of your hand upon us. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will worry about itself. Help us to live today. This is the day which the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Save us from being anxious about tomorrow. May we learn from the birds of the air. Said the robin to the sparrow, I should really like to know why these anxious human beings rush about and worry so said the sparrow to the robin, friend, I think that it must be that they have no heavenly father such as cares for you and me. Thank you that we do have a heavenly father and that you care for us personally. Let us then join in the family prayer together, praying, our father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. <laughs> 